ladies and gentlemen. We live in a world that is seriously threatened by climate change due to our own follies. Scientists have agreed that climate change is a reality. Human-induced causes are responsible for increase in global temperature. We are now experiencing unusual weather patterns. These developments will certainly tilt the delicate balance of global environment in such a way that the very human existence will be at stake. At Rio, we undertook to make unprecedented efforts to address the threat of climate change by adopting the UN Convention on Climate Change. The Kyoto Protocol agreed on limits on emission. In 2002, we reviewed Rio commitment in Johannesburg. Unfortunately, the threatening tendencies observed in 2002 continue to be aggravated. As we head for Copenhagen, much doubt remains about our river resolve to deal with this threat. The commitment, of G commitment by G8, G8 at L'Aquila to reduce developed country greenhouse emissions by 80% in 2050 is a welcome development. I am not certain whether this is adequate. The world is in this dangerous predicament today as a result of unsustainable development models adopted by developed countries since the Industrial Revolution. Those countries in their rush to development burned fossil fuels in huge quantities, cut down their life-giving forests, polluted their rivers and oceans and acquired high standards of living. We in the developing world aspire to such high standards of living. But if we were to follow the same model ourselves, there is no doubt that the global environment will be rendered unsustainable. The solution should not involve demanding that the developing world erect its aspirations to improve the lives of its people. The Montreal Protocol to the Vienna Convention on the ozone layer committed developed countries to provide funding to enable developing countries to utilize ozone-friendly and sophisticated technologies and substances. We all know that this is a very successful environmental convention. We could use the same model in order to address the threat of global warming and climate change while enabling the developing countries to achieve some of the comforts of life taken for granted in the West. This would mean providing funding for developing countries to adopt technologies that are environmental friendly. Developed countries will be required to adopt policies curtailing the wasteful use of energy and conservation of resources. Tropical rainforests are a major carbon absorption mechanism. Deforestation is responsible for approximately 20% of carbon emissions. If we are to preserve these forests and avoid 20% of carbon emissions, sufficient incentives must be provided to countries which host these forests. 20% of Sri Lanka's space is still under forest cover. These forests are an important resource for us. But if this resource is not to be utilized for development purposes, then practical, must, practical measures must be made available to preserve them. One possibility is to ascribe a carbon value to these forests to enable these valuable forests to be traded in the global carbon market. We need to explore all proposals and come up with practical solutions that will enable us to preserve our globe for future generations. Let us make a commitment today that we stop discussing this problem in a theoretical manner and begin to adopt a practical measure with a view to resolving it 
to the best of our ability. I hope we will be able to leave behind a livable land for future generations. Thank you.